Welcome guys to the M2M coverage where we're covering uh, soccer or football. I'm Edward and I'm with Ahmed and Amir. Uh, so we're all covering the first leg. So and we're, go we're going to react to it. So let's get it started. So the first game, you know, uh, where it's Liverpool versus uh, Leipzig, uh, Liverpool with 2-0. So Amir, what, what was your reaction to the scoreline? Um... Liverpool, I think, deserved to win, but they were helped by Leipzig's mistakes. Pretty much both goals, I think, were just, like, passes that didn't go where they were intended. They intercepted by, was it Salah and Mane that scored that game? So, yeah, yeah, I think Liverpool, like I said in the, we said it in the prediction that it would it would be easy for them. But next round with all these injuries, especially with Van Dijk and Joe Gomez, and all the entire back line pretty much out, I think, uh Next round, they'll have problems, but they'll get through Leipzig easy, no problem. Yeah, Amid, uh, I know that you're a big Liverpool fan. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, uh, what do you think they're going to do for the next leg, you know? I mean, you know, who else was injured, injured recently? Henderson, um, you know, and he was actually playing back. We had to put in Nathaniel Phillips, you know. I think the injuries just keep coming, but I know that Liverpool – will probably still go through Leipzig easy. I mean, you know, that first game they played three in the back. Um, and luckily, like uh, for us, I mean, Leipzig played three in the back. And luckily for us, we were able, Mane and Salah were able to capitalize on these defensive mistakes. But we did get lucky because, you know, you shouldn't depend on mistakes. But it was still a, it was definitely like a foreseeable victory. Yeah, I well, I think the I think Leipzig was missing that uh, go to striker. You know, they uh, put Pauls in, in the bench, which I was kind of confused because usually, you know, when Timo Werner is gone, like you know, he I thought he's the guy who goes up there. So, yeah, uh, hopefully they're gonna start him to make the game interesting. But I, I said too, like I think Liverpool definitely capitalized the mistake, which I think that's that's what you should do. So yeah, so next game, you know, Barcelona versus PSG. Um, uh, this game was just wow, four one. Like, I wasn't expecting this scoreline. So yeah, Amir, what do you think? Like, were you surprised or like who? Like, what was your reaction? It wasn't surprising that they lost. That Barca lost. It was more surprising of uh, the scoreline. Um, this was probably one of the more enjoyable games to watch among the first like matches. Um. Mbappe just put on a nice little masterclass without Neymar. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this was expected for me. Barca was going to capitulate at some point. Um, who else was good that match? I, I don't remember too many chances from Barca, to be honest, either. I, it was a well-deserved win from PSG. Just clinical finishing as well to put four goals in. Yeah. Yeah, so, Ahmed, you know, is do you think Mbappe will go to Liverpool now? It's kind of interesting. I mean, I know like a lot of people are looking at Mbappe right now, but I still think that he he's probably going to stay at PSG just a little while longer, even though you know the interest is definitely there for both Mbappe and Haaland from Liverpool, and they're also looking. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, they're also looking at other players, but definitely like those two, a lot of teams are looking at them. And uh, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be difficult to get, get him this summer or maybe even next summer. Yeah, I mean, due to COVID, yeah. like a lot of finances is pretty low. So it's going to be tough to get those world-class players. But yeah, I think what Mbappe did, it shows us, oh, he could take it to the next step, you know. Um, we've seen him nas his uh, national competition, you know, in the World Cup, he definitely uh, tore it apart. But we want to see that club step up because, you know, he went to Monaco and he was from Monaco and then he went to PSG. And we were trying to see, oh, can he do it? Um, but yeah, he showed it. He scored a hat trick and all his goals is just amazing. So yeah. And then everyone's deciding whether she he should go to Real Madrid or you know, the Premier League. And I, I think he should go to the Premier League because he's so young and he still has that physique. There's time as well. Yeah, so I... He played for Liverpool and for the next couple of years and then in his prime moved to a big club like Real Madrid. Hey, what are you trying to say then? 
<laughs> I don't think he's gonna go to Liverpool. I mean, he could he could go to the Premier League. I mean, he's a big Ronaldo fan, so he might want to follow his steps, maybe conquer every league, go from Premier League to La Liga as well. Um, but I think he's gonna spend until he reaches kind of like his prime between maybe 24 or 25 when he hits 24. Uh, he'll probably just go straight to Real Madrid or something like that. And just, yeah, I think if he, especially if he makes the final this year with PSG, which he definitely could, why not? Um, he, he'll, he'll probably stay a year or two. Yeah, I mean, Pochettino is that new manager who well, able yeah, to uh, get PSG uh, back and going. I think this year we're winning um, the passing of the torch. So like Mbappe uh-huh. yeah speaking of you know uh the next game we're going to talk about is uh Dortmund versus Seville it was a pretty pretty close it was two three um you know Seville was in the scoreline first one zero it was a great goal from uh Suso and then you know Holland just came in so yeah Amir uh where do you think like Holland should go like if he has to leave I think Holland's probably going to leave Dortmund before Mbappe leaves um, PSG. And um, I think, I mean, Barca could use him, but I don't know if he's going to go to La Liga. I don't, I can't see him. He wouldn't go to Real Madrid because I think Mbappe's already handled that with Real Madrid. And um, I can see Holland definitely going to the Premier League, most likely for City, Manchester City. Uh, his dad played there. He was a, a, a fan since a young age. So I I could definitely see him in uh, playing for Pep. Yeah, so uh, Ahmed, so was, the scoreline was pretty close. Do you think Dortmund could pull it off? I mean, this was one of the closer games that we highlighted in that, that first video. You know, it was ve- very close, just like as you know we predicted. But Hound really came through with the two goals. Uh, really good finishes from all of them. Um, the Sevilla defense wasn't too bad either, either. But I think um, Dorman definitely like showed a really good like passing masterclass in that game, and it came through for them. Yeah, you know, you better watch out for Sevilla because you know they're usually the Europa League giants, you know, and they're playing in the Champions League, so yeah. it's gonna be a very interesting game. Uh, hopefully, you know, and uh, one thing that kind of stuck out to me was. Um, when Holland tweeted uh, saying like, oh, after I saw Mbappe scoring a hat trick, you know, I got to put it on a show and he definitely put it up there. So yeah, I was, that made me laugh. So it's maybe the next Messi versus Ronaldo rivalry. I don't know. I don't know if I should call it a rivalry, but we'll get there soon enough. But I'm very excited for the, the football <clears throat> future. They're both tied for top score in the Champions League this year. Oh, yeah. It's, it's... So that'll be nice to see who ends up on top. Probably whoever gets the farthest, I think, will end up on top. So probably Mbappe. Ahmed, do you think it's Mbappe? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I like them both very much. You know, they're both very entertaining to watch. So. I mean, Holland has, Holland has like two years on Mbappe too. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think you know, kind of like Messi, Ronaldo kind of deal. Where yeah, Messi years. was younger. Has just a just as uh, same amount of goals in, in in a lot less games than uh. Mbappe for overall Champions League. I think Mbappe has like 25 and something like, I don't know, I don't know how many games, but way more games. And uh, Holland has like 18 and 13, I think, something like that, something crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, the next game we're going to talk about is uh, Porto versus Juventus. Uh, Porto just came out with a 2 1 victory, I think, but Juventus getting that key away goal. So, I think that's going to be precious. But what I saw from Juventus was kind of struggling. So, Amir, what was wrong with Juventus today or that game? I think Juventus is just bad, like, as a whole. Just completely terrible team. Um, Ronaldo didn't do enough to save them. Uh, Chiesa got the goal at the end uh, for the away goal. Um, Porto just played with, like, so much aggressiveness. Like, they knew that all they had to do was just push them around a bit and they'll control the match. Like, really, that underdog mentality that Porto has, especially with Pepe in the back, you know, he's just crazy. He's just an animal. So he's going to knock some people around and hope for the best. Yeah, Ahmed, uh, were you surprised that Porto was, like, defensive? I mean, you know, like, 
Juventus, you know, they've been scoring a lot of goals in Serie A, but, like, you know, were you surprised they only scored, like, one goal against Porto? I, I mean, like, like uh, Amir said, you know, Ronaldo wasn't there to save them, and I'm pretty sure Amir also called this out in the last prediction video where he said that Juventus is basically mostly Ronaldo, and they depend on him way too much. And that definitely showed, you know, against a strong Porto defense that game, you know, Pepe showed, did some work. Um, I think Manafa had the assist, the right back. Um, so, yeah, they really couldn't – I don't know how you could get through that defense when you have, you know, when you're starting players like Kulzefsky and McKenney even started. Like, it's – I don't know. I think this team – there's still – something to build off of, but we're seeing like kind of a similar trend along with Barcelona where they really need to step up, get some more young talent and, you know, kind of just get back on track. I think that, that UA, the away goal was just enough for Ronaldo to give a little bit of a boost for them in the next leg. I think they could still pull it off for sure. All right, Ronaldo's going to score a hat-trick next game for sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, you can't always depend on that. If he doesn't do enough next game, you know Ronaldo's on the way out. This is Ronaldo's game right here. Yeah, so yeah, I definitely both agree with you guys. It's just Juventus is pretty much like depending on uh, Ronaldo too much. I mean, he's not that same like Real Madrid guy, you know. And I was surprised the lineup. Um, I could look at the lineup right uh right now. Like it was a weird lineup. Yeah, they didn't have like. Or Thor or like Morata or Dybala. Like I know Dybala has been struggling. Uh, I think one surprising thing uh, that when Chiellini got subbed off, I think that's where like the defense just like totally dropped off. Um, but yeah, I was very surprised how like, and yeah, I mean Juventus and like literally the first minute making that first mistake, which you can't do that. Yeah. Um, and good for Porto to, to capitalize it. Um. I think if Porto score one away goal, I think it's over. Yeah, I agree. So it's going to be a tough for Juventus. But hey, you know, if anyone could do it, Ronaldo can do it. So I agree. the next game, I think is this is the most competitive one. It's Atletico versus Chelsea. But Chelsea got that away goal, that fantastic Giroud, beautiful goal, bicycle kick. You know, Emir, like, what do you think? That was the key goal for Chelsea, right? That was a big goal. I mean, we knew this would be close. We mentioned it in our predictions video. We knew this would be a one of these kind of matches where they'll go back and forth. And um, I think this was probably the most boring uh, match of the first leg because it was so competitive. I think both teams were too scared to kind of commit to the attack uh, on the other side of getting countered and um, getting exposed in the back off of your attack. So. I think they both kind of just sat back, maybe used the possession a little bit. Mid, uh, what is well, what went wrong with Atletico? Uh, I think you know, I mean, when you look at the stats, they didn't get enough chances. They didn't get well. That's because they didn't get enough possession, and I, I know that's the way you know Atletico is a defensive team. They like to play, but when you give a team like, even though Chelsea. They haven't been too good offensively this year. They're, they're still trying to figure themselves out. Um, that Giroud goal, you know, that's a very Giroud goal, by the way, like that bicycle kick. And I don't, I don't know. I think any another day it would have been Atletico's game, like, but but Chelsea really, you know, they did their job this game. Yeah, I like. Yeah, this game was pretty nail biter. I think Atletico was just not the Atletico we see in La Liga. Like they were really clinical because their shape and you know those key passes, uh, and then you know you have Luis Suarez and Joao Felix in the. But I think Chelsea like impressively just were very solid in the back. You know, we were asking a lot of questions about their defense, but you know they didn't even have Thiago Silva in, so like. I was very um, uh, impressed of their defense. Uh, but beside that, like, I hope Atletico can step it up because um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to those games. 
but yeah, beside that, like not that many clear chances. I was worried more about Chelsea's offense, actually. Yeah. I was worried more about Chelsea's offense versus a strong Atletico defense. That's probably the reason why they're top of their league right now. And Chelsea, you know, they've been iffy in the league, so. I kind of expected the roles to be, like, reversed the way they played, you know? Exactly, exactly. Hopefully we can see the truth. Uh, the yeah. I, want, I wanted to see more from Felix, bro. Like, Joao, like, I want him to be, like, up there with uh, Mbappe and Haaland. And... Yeah. Yeah. Third guy up there with that. Has to yeah. Be well, you don't cost 100 mil plus for nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's true. And I, I, I think also... I think they kind of missed their key defenders too. I don't see uh, Jimenez. Uh, I don't know. I think he's injured. Tierney. I mean, not Tierney. Um, Trippier. Trippier, yeah. I don't think Trippier was. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, Laurenti as a right back is not as effective. I know he's been playing pretty well um, as a more as attacking player. I've seen him. Yeah. Like in the midfield, so it was kind of hard, you know, when you're missing those two starting uh, wide back, you know. You have... Yeah, the next game, it's Bayern. What do you expect? Bayern versus Lazio. It's like, I think this game is already over one to four. I mean, yeah, when you saw, Amir, when you saw that little, um, little Galaxy score, like, you're like, what was your, like, reaction? You're like, you knew that it was going to be game over, right? at all it wasn't surprising at all not just that goal but every goal like every the domination from Bayern just thought it was so expected um and I was gonna say uh what was I gonna say the, the, the all they're they're away they're playing in Lazio are they not and they they played so dominant it was like nothing from Lazio and uh what's it called they could have put more in to be honest, I, I, it was kind of four, – four goals is a bit low for Bayern in that game. They, they were just so dominant. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, Ahmed, um, do you think Bayern can win the whole thing? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious they're definitely going to be defend, defending the title, you know, like as they are doing right now. Um, they're doing a pretty good job of it. Definitely look, looking scary. You know, just putting away a team like Lazio like that. It's not even, you know, doing that bad in their league, I don't think, you know. Um, and they were they were playing in Rome. I mean, so, yeah, like imagine just, you know, going to Rome and disposing of a team like that. You know, there were some mis- mistakes um, from Lazio that I didn't like. But um, like that Sané goal, you know, from the, the defense is just it's just crazy yeah. how Bayern fills the box, you know, it's in like key areas yeah, too, you know. Like, They're always there, you know. Yeah, it's just their high line, you know. Uh, when you're playing like three in the back, yeah, you can just press them however you want. And it's so easy for them to do that with the high line because they have the speed they have with Davies and, and uh, Alaba, Kimmich, even. Sonny. <laughs> Sonny can get back, yeah, too. That's yeah. Cool. Davies, Davies was in the box so much. I saw Davies in the box. I swear that he's like being converted to like a winger. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting because uh, they put uh, Nicholas Sue as a right back. So like I was like, wait, what are they doing? But I think they're gonna shift more Davis up top and then pull Sule as more as a central. And then I think yeah, they're, they're like moving three in the back kind yeah. of. Uh, yeah, and, I mean and maybe maybe Kimmich comes back too. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's and then Goretzka push up and then. I mean, I was surprised that uh, Luciala, he scored. Um, like, I think he's a young... It was a good goal. Yeah. It was a good goal, too. He's 17 years old. Oh, my God. The, like, the youngster in Bayern is just crazy as well. So, like, yeah. Okay. So, the next game, I think this is one of the most top game today we had is um, Real Madrid versus Atlanta. Um a lot of things happen, so um, Amir, you know, we gotta talk about that red card. Do you well, believe it was a red card? I'll start with this one. Um, so I was famously I predicted Atlanta to get through this round of sixteen matchup, but um, it's kind of hard to do that when Papa Florentino is uh, uh, 
<laughs> kind of taking control of that match. Um, the red card, it's never a red card. Never in a million years is that a red card. Um, and I think that Casemiro should have actually been sent off instead. You got the yellow card in the first half. Then in the second half, he goes down in the box for diving. There's minimal contact, not, not enough to be a penalty, n never a penalty. And then if he fell, that's fine. But as he's going down, he's calling for a pen. He's shouting for a pen. And then when the ref goes up to him and confronts him about it being uh, diving, which should be a yellow card, he, he's saying he fell. And he apologizes to the ref and he gets up and they play on, not, like nothing happened. And then 10 minutes later, they score a goal. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of tough when – things go against you like that with Atalanta. They lost Gomez in January to Sevilla. Um, Illich just didn't start, which was pretty weird for me. Um, Muriel didn't do enough. I mean, but it's kind of hard. It's, it's with 10 men from maybe 15 minutes on. You can't really do much. Don't expect it from them. Uh, this is the one chance Atalanta had to really uh, make a statement against Madrid with all these injuries that happened. Um, but I mean, it didn't have. It could still happen second leg. You never know. But, but yeah, we'll see. A bit. Do you think Atlanta has a chance to make a comeback? So that was that was definitely you know their chance to do something. You know, we were talking about the the bets today, and uh, you know you could see that Atlanta had the odds actually of winning. They were favored to win. You know, most likely because they're. Their bench problems, you know, a lot of people injured, you know, like so many hazard Benzema. You know, I, I can't. Can you keep naming some? I, yeah, so many. Carvajal, Odiozola. Carvajal. Um, a lot of people injured. A lot of people. Yeah. Injured. Sergio Ramos. Valverde. Valverde, yeah. Ramos. Valverde. So many. So, like, you know, it wasn't looking good, but then. You have to remember that still Real Madrid, you know, they were still playing a good team. Even with Isco playing striker, I don't think he did a bad job of, like, distributing the ball. We got Cruz, uh, Miro, Modric, Courtois, even Nacho. Nacho's not a bad player. Like, he's yeah, a good yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and Mendy. Mendy's one of the best, if not the best left backs in the world this year. Um, I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him the best left back in the world this year. Especially Who can shoot? Like that with their weak foot, like who could that? Cool, amazing goal. Yeah, well, just shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. Yeah, you gotta talk about the that red card. You know, it always comes up in a game like this. You know, with Real Madrid, and are you calling Papa Fiorentino? Papa Fiorentino, he gets things. Break it. He fist bumping the ref, the ref in the locker room. It's, yeah. it's kind of I don't know. I know what you have to say about that. It's kind of making it look like he's. Yeah. Yeah, has a hand in all this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was a pretty tough game for Atlanta. I mean, yeah, I, I honestly, when I heard that Real Madrid, like, literally only had, like, 11 starting caliber players, I was just like, oh, man, I think Atlanta should, should take advantage. Um, but I think they still have a chance. I think Real Madrid should definitely should have scored more when you still have, like, the midfield. Like, you still have, like, like Modric, Casemiro, and Tony Cruz, it, it kind of shows you they're missing a striker. And I think that's why they're trying to get like Haaland or Mbappe in the summer, you know, or the, or the next summer, you know, like Vinicius was terrible. I thought he was like pretty much the worst player out there. Like essentially didn't do much, like literally had a, your, def, your defender scoreable. I mean, I'm not going to take any, any um any credit yeah. from from Mendy. but yeah um, I think Real Madrid will be full strength hopefully hopefully that's a thing for us knock on wood um but I think Atlanta still have a chance because this is their home game like anything can happen from this like this year you know so anything can happen so I'm not knocking them off but I think Real Madrid will still get the dub and the final game of the first legs um is Borussia Mönchengladbach versus Man City. Uh, Man City scored two away goals. I mean, what can you say? Cancelo with the two assists. Now, Emir, do you think he is the best left back since you said 
Frontline Mendy was the best left back. I think Cancelo is the best left back right now. Being played as a left back? I thought he was. Yeah, player. he did. Yeah, he played today as left back. I don't think he's been playing every game as a left back. So. Yeah, sometimes he's right back. Sometimes he's yeah. even center back. Sometimes, to be honest, which I don't even know what Pep is doing. But um, but yeah, I mean, he can have an argument for sure. Why not? But uh, just personally, I think Mendy's uh, Mendy's younger too and has more of an impact in, in matches than uh, Cancelo does. Um, but for the match in general, um, City was expected of them. Honestly, maybe even more goal, goals were probably expected of them. Uh, strong matches from the midfielders keep shining for me in, in City. They're amazing. It's so crazy how, I mean, you don't even know who's playing in the midfield anymore. He turned Gundogan into a striker and Bernardo Silva scoring goals and everything. Everything's crazy with uh, City. I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. I think unless, unless they get matched up against Bayern, they're probably into the final for sure. Even if they get PSG, they'll they'll probably they'll probably get past them. Yeah, I mean they're they're like in an insane run. I think in the Premier League they're like nine, 19 games undefeated right now, without conceding many goals either. Yeah, four or five. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have, they haven't had they uh, haven't had Aguero or De Bruyne for a very long time. Yeah, I mean those are two key starters and. Definitely when De Bruyne came back against Arsenal, um, I was watching that game. Like, the Arsenal tactic was man-to-man on Gundogan and De Bruyne because they know they're going to switch it up. And it was really interesting. And I think that's how you stop them. And, like, like the first two goals, like, the first minute that Sterling scored, like, that happens. Like, the cross was magnificent for Maris. Like, what can you say that? But the rest of the game, they couldn't do anything from, like, Gundogan had to switch off, and once Gabriel Jesus subbed on, then it changed the game. But this game, I think, like, Cancelo coming in as a left back, sometimes he comes in in the middle, and, like, it changed the whole aspect, and I think Cancelo definitely deserved the man of the match this game. So, Ahmed, so do you think the city can win the whole thing too, since from the arms, from everything. I think they're definitely, definitely don't count them out. Don't, don't count them out. It's kind of tough to say because really we're, we're looking at three teams Bayern, PSG, and City looking the whole thing, winning, looking to win the whole thing. You know, I'll be very surprised if it's not one of those three this year. Uh, you know, Given on given the day, like it could go to any of those those three. I do think, like Amir, I do think that PSG uh, is a bit weaker than those two, but they're still a very strong club. Um, can we see them winning it? I think there's definitely a good chance. Definitely a good chance. But it just going through Bayern, man. Like, yeah, I mean, I have City as favorites to win, and here's why. Um, the depth in their team is probably better than Bayern and PSG's. Um, but I don't know if they can do it over two matches against Bayern. So if they meet them in the final, I'm sure that they can beat them in one match on their day. But over two matches, I'm not sure if they can get past Bayern because Bayern are so consistent and so good. I mean, City are too, actually. But um, just when it comes to the strength of the, the team, I think Bayern are stronger. Yeah, it's just all about that consistency. You know, like... Um, we never like John Stones being really good right now. Yeah. But like if Laporte and like even Laporte was injured, like John Stone and Ruben Diaz was like the perfect partnership. And I think Ruben Diaz is like the best signings in this uh, this year's windows. I argue that. Just, um, you know, Ederson, I think he became like the number one goalkeeper for, for the Brazil team, you know, if, the World Cup, if it happens. Uh, yeah, it's just they're solid. Um, like, they could cross the ball and they still go headers, like, even though they don't have, like, a, a target man, and they can still beat you with a counter. Like, they can beat you so... Like, Man City could beat any team in any ways. So, yeah, I think, I think Man City is going to be the favorite, but it's going to be really tough if they get matched up with Bayern. And I think PSG, the only way they will get to the the finals 
is if they don't get match up with Man City and Bayern, which that's it will be impossible unless in the semifinals like Bayern and Man City are matched up and then PSG get whoever. But besides that, um, yeah. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel, the M2M Network, for more sports and entertainment content.